Hi kids. Yes, it's Jack and Ori time. No, well, that's kind of a joke, but sometimes I just like to, to read posts. I'm, because I'm lazy, okay, I can, I can just send a link, but if I send a link, it's no guarantee that you get it. Then again, you don't want to listen to me read out something that you can read yourself. But I'm not that sort of web page. So if you, if you don't want to listen to this, that's fine. You can read it yourself. You go to, um, uh, what's it called? It's Joe Blow or something. Uh, exclusively talk about Wonder Woman, Batman, DCO with producer Charles Rovin. Uh, it was by Jimmy. I'll just read it out. Um, right now I was, I was watching Zombie there. Season 7. Uh, sorry, season three, episode seven, dot nap time, like an Irish woman in red. Uh, again, just found out Bond died. I, I left a wee tune on the last video. Roger Moore, that was my generation. Roger Moore, I still, I still like Sean Connery, mind you. I still like Sean Connery. It's just been a weird. Weird week with Manchester and what happened with Zach um, and stuff. Uh, it's just the world's going to shit, really. But anyway, so here it is. Here's a wee inter interview with Charles Rovin. On June the 2nd, the highly anticipated new adventures from DCEU is heading into theatres in a very big way. Wonder Woman stars Gal Gadot, Chris Pine, Danny Houston, Robin Wright, David Thurlis, Connie Nielsen. And let's just say the word of mouth has been quite impressive. I am a fan recently of the junket for the new film directed by Patty Jenkins. We spoke to one of the most important forces beyond, uh, behind the universe, Charles Rovin. Man be Superman, Dawn of Justice, Suicide Squad, and The Dark Knight. During our conversation, the producer opened up about Wonder Woman and the positive word of mouth the film is attracting. We also talked about Affleck stepping down as director and Matt Reeves jumping in for the Batman. Charles praises Joss Whedon, who's on board for Batgirl, and he looks forward to bringing both Reeves and the Buffy created to the DCEU. It was a real pleasure speaking to Mr. Rovin, and after WW, I personally can't wait to see where these characters go next. Are you ready for William? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, you ready for William? Uh, are you ready for Wonder Woman? I know we sure are. Well, see, there we go. I mean, Joss Whedon is, is involved in the DCEU long before him, um, you know, so, and there was talks about him being involved with the... Uh, Helping Zack Snyder with the Justice League and feeling the tone of it and stuff like that. So, yep. I'm not going to go on about Josh Whedon. Right, now we're at it. With Wonder Woman, DCU appears to be taking a different approach. There are several small, wonderful moments, and that is due in part of the critical hits you took on BVS and Suicide Squad. And he answers. Maybe I should do him or Sean Connery. Nah, no, I won't do him or Sean Connery action. Honestly, we started out with a very different character. And as I've pointed out, and maybe you've heard me say, for all my experience with the DCU, Wonder Woman is the only superhero. And I'm including Batman, even though he's not really super, even in the... Uh, Marvel cans or Dark Horse, I don't know any superhero who has wanted to embrace their dest destiny so much. From the time that they were a little kid, Diana knew because her mother and her aunt and all the legacy that she needed to be heroic and able to get out there. And her mission in life was going to be to protect people who couldn't protect themselves. That already gave you a very different perspective to be working from in terms of telling on uh, an Ori, Ori Gensian story that was different than anybody else's. Also, you are dealing with a character who is extremely compassionate and empath uh, empathic. 
Empathic. <coughs> empathic. It's not empathic. Empathic. Em empa ah! Anyway, you know what? Empathy sort of thing. Right, okay. Empa ah. It allows a character to be to be that. Someone whose vi violence is the last resort. It's not the, the first resort for the immediate response. That also allows you to go about doing things in a different kind of way. And as we are crafting the movie, and it was certainly enhanced by pa Patty, which I didn't know from her movies, to be honest, that there is an amazing sense of humour. Did you know that? Most, not at all laughing. You know what I'm saying, laughing. Even the, even the killing, I wouldn't say is the funniest television show either, right? Exactly. She got this amazing sense of humour, as does Chris Pine, uh, as does Gal Gadot. But she's the one that said you're, uh, you've you got this amazing situation of two fish out of water, Diana in particular. She might be the strong and fierce, compassionate and, and pure, but she's also very naive of the world of the island that's going to allow for a tremendous amount of potential humour. And here is the jaded guy who is the fisher of water when he's on the island. Once he takes her into the man's world, he knows stuff that is going to blow her mind. And then he is there uh, to milk the humour between the two of them. I think those things allowed us to take the movie in different directions. So when Patty took the material, we had gotten to the point before she came on as director and said, let's move it in this direction. We thought it was refreshing and fun and it still allowed us to have a really great emotional emotion when we needed to. Now that... Uh, I'll just... Uh, it goes on. I'm going to talk a little bit more. All right, and it goes on. Looking at this... And obviously the critics will, will be a, appear to embrace it. Will that play into how you will carry this into the future at all? Well, you know, I know you might find this hard to believe, but it's really true. We haven't really... You, you always see amused when, when you make, make a film, particularly when you know that everybody is going to be interested, including yourself, on making the next one. On the case of Wonder Woman, we did some additional photography on this and we were finishing that while we were shooting Justice League. So literally, there was a period of time where Gal was working on both movies at the same time. So you go, what is, so you go, what is the next one going to be? And, and what's the next one going to be? And you can go, we can't be thinking about the next Wonder Woman. Uh, well, because we are going to be intervening periods between the end of Wonder Woman and Batman v Superman, or are we going to do something that will pick up after Justice League? Somebody had an idea about that, and somebody had an idea about this, but we didn't really spend any time because we were just finishing the movie maybe six weeks ago. We took all that time that they gave us because when you are doing these special effect movies, you can't actually finish the technical aspects of the movie until your shots are locked. I can't have my composer come in and actually lay down the score down because if the frame is off by one frame or it's out of sync, so the technical aspects of making a movie like this doesn't really allow you a lot of time, particularly if you do some additional photography and there's a, a fixed release date and stuff like that. Listen, it's a high class problem, but it's still an issue that you're working so hard that you've got publicity and all that stuff. You don't really have a lot of time to sit around and talk. Story. Looking at the long haul, how many films are actors signed on for this point? Well, everybody's indifferent depending on where the deals are made and how many they have done. Ben Affleck has done Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad and Justice League, right? Gal has done Wonder Woman, Justice League and Batman v Superman. 
they've all they all have deals i'm not exactly sure i couldn't sit here and tell you this this one has so many options left and this one has no more options left or whatever the great news is that in terms of my best reads of the situation everybody loves the characters to play this is not just this is not just the the lead good guys it's the bad guys as well or the bad but not evil members of suicide squad laughing i think everybody really likes those characters i think all of the actors would like to be part of another one when affleck decided not to direct batman and mark reeves stepped in i think people were afraid that uh, ben may not reprise the role is there any fear of that and then he answers. I mean, I'm not really involved with the Batman, but from everything we have, a uh, uh, cursory involvement because the character is going to touch us in some way. It play. Um, if Ben plays a character, it's going to touch some part of what we are doing. But I have no feeling whatsoever, except positive, that Matt loves Ben, and the work that he has done as Batman, and Ben thinks that Matt is a really terrific filmmaker i have every expectation that they're going to make a movie together so put that up your bottom hole and blow out i know what a new one yeah, just put that. Uh, i love the thought of matt Reeves stepping into this world yep yeah, i think it's cool you have uh you have Josh sweden coming in back girl you have reeves for the batman i mean this is exciting stuff any talk of building a bat Bears like they do in comics. Well, again, I'm not involved in Batgirl, but I'm really a big fan of Joss Whedon as a filmmaker. I think it's great that he's involved with the DCU right now. I've been trying to get into business with him for a really long, uh, long time, up until a few years ago. He was involved with Marvel, and then we'll, when we left, he didn't want to think about it for a while. Getting back to Wonder Woman, one thing that really impressed me was just how perfect Gal Gadot was in the role. There we go, John Campbell. Mm-hmm, and everybody. Uh, there are two sides of the same coin. It's incredible, isn't it? It is. Yes, he is wonderful as a character. I remember when she was first announced, much like Heath Ledger with The Dark Knight, there was a bit of fear from the fans. Oh, there was, there was terrible backlash. Uh huh. We know her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was backlash when we made the the made Heath the Joker. It was pretty big backlash when we made Ben Batman. The same thing. The other thing was as to why you're going to be a a little bit. You have to revere the fans, but not everything that the fans say is. And there's a lot of fan opinion. You've got to be careful, but ultimately you have to. Take all of that in and still have your own instincts about what to do. How often does fans' opinions play into what you're trying to create? That's a good question. I think that the thing we looked at, the amount of pushback we got from on BVS, at least in terms of things that we could look at about tone, even though we felt very strongly that in the making... Of the film and if you actually look at the canon when batman and superman fought that's a very dark comic and the movie was going to be dark as much as everybody embraced it when we announced it i think that nobody really thought that but you had to take these characters and get them into a place where two guys that we really admire and like are going to fight each other in a really tough way where one may be thinking he's going to take the other one out how are you going to get that and make it feel real the good news for us is that we knew just by virtue of the fact that we were going to be bringing these other guys into the group with this recruitment and it was going to be lighter in tone yep more evidence that it was all in the plan, lighter tone. It wasn't changed because of fans' reaction to BVS. It was, you know. Um, we discussed what Patty brought to the firms. Are you, are you thinking about ha uh, having her return? I think she's going to have a lot of uh, options after this movie. Laughing. I agree. 
I believe that uh, she's dedicated to the character, so I'm hopeful she'll be back for another one. But there's no other one yet in the works to commit to. Uh, and I thought that was a fantastic um, interview. I'll, I'll leave the link to the description below. Um, you probably not, not watched this and because wouldn't want to listen to me talk through it when you can read it yourself. But I like doing this sort of thing. It, it sort of makes me feel good because I feel like I've passed on what I've read um, and not just by... I've, I've read it out to you. So I've said it a lot better than what I can say. You know, if I've, if I've read that and then I have to somehow put all that in my head and then say to you, I wouldn't do it justice. You know, it's, it's, you know, when you've got it on a piece of paper, you can write and stuff, or I've, you know, some people do it on script, you know, that to me, I might as well read, that is my script. Um, not, uh, apart from that, it's, you know, again, it's, it's, it's been a hard time for DC, and, and what I've got from that interview as well, that, that they've not planned for, for future, but you know how Marvel's got a timeline. Well, DC hasn't. They're just trying to get the films done and and make and that's you know and maybe that's that's a good thing not to have a timeline because things change, opinions change, and and you listen to the audience and as I say, there's there's hints that Black Adam may appear in another film and before his solo film and then if he's big on that who knows he'll bring that forward I think Zach my personal opinion is Zach's made the story he's he's done the um, Man of Steel Batman v Superman um Justice League uh, and Justice League 2 that is that is the main story that's it where he di directs it, I've have not had time to check my messages. Uh, some messages were talking about that hack Snyder, but please let's just not share his stuff. Don't even go to the guy's page. The guy has got something wrong with him. Uh, I've seen a nice picture. Uh, guy who's a fan of the Superman and Supergirl, he's sent in some nice pictures. Well done. I'm always liking... Anybody that's got any positive pictures, I might even post it on Facebook at one time. And just right now, it's not time because of of recent events. Um, where was I? I'm watching a zombie. Uh, 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 it's it's um no I'm um, not asking me where I was now. Uh, oh, I the Justice League films. Uh, the, the the Justice League. You know, I mean that's. That's a crucial film. Once the Justice League film's done, and then, for me, I think Warner Brothers can pick and choose what they want to do. You know, Green Lanterns, that will do that. Because uh, the major story's done. You know, the major story's done. Now we can maybe go into other characters. And we're already doing it. We're already going into sort of the minor characters by going into Batgirl. And who would thought we would have a Batgirl film? Seriously? That, I never, you know, you, we talk about a Justice League film, uh, not in our lifetimes, but a Batgirl, that was, that was way out there, you know, especially when you look at Batman v Superman and Robin Dead thing, you would think, no, nah, they'll never ever do a Bat, Batgirl movie. Now they are. And as I say, now, and if you look at Commissioner Gordon in the Justice League trailer, um, Zack Snyder's got the whole look down to a T. And so there you go, haters. Evidence is right there, and and Zach, I believe, will be guiding future directors into into the into the mix, into his sort of vision. Josh Whedon will play around and probably say to Zach, "Would it be okay if I do this? Is, is this a wee bit off your sort of vision and and future films? You know, you never know." Sam, we have a because it all started by this guy and and Jeff Johns might come on board and says no they'll be like the instead of the studio 
it'll be like Zack Snyder and Jeff Johns will be like the consultants, you know. Uh, one, uh, I've got a question from Messenger or, or something like that. Will I, do I think Zack Snyder will come back for Justice League 2? I would hope it would be to fit, uh, to go on the same trend. But I like to, but I like to think, um, you know, it'd be like Kill Bill one and two. Yeah, I know they were done by the same directors, but it was like a different theme. You know, one was based on cowboys, and the other one was based on samurais or whatever. I like to think the the two films will have a different feel. So maybe having another director come in, not because of whatever Zach has done with Justice League, not just. Just to give us this different feel, a different way of, of looking at it. We all we all know what Zack Snyder's vision is, and it's and it's good. And I think when Justice League comes out, as I say, and Joss Whedon's only done the wee minor parts, he's he's nailed down the characters. He nailed down the characters in Batman v Superman. Um, so now they'll have to whatever future director comes and touches these people, they'll have to go by what Zack Snyder's done. So he doesn't need to direct anymore. He has set the characters up and the universe. That's my thoughts anyway. So thanks for listening. Be positive out there.